So hello everyone, welcome to Compost Camp GDSC GSRC. So in this particular video, we're gonna build a dice roller application. And let me tell you that this is gonna be a final video of this Compost Camp. So uh, let's take a glance how the uh, dice roller application will look. So this is how the dice roller application will look. So this is the image composable and below this image composable, there is a button composable which contains a text composable rule. So on pressing this button, uh, the image composable here will get changed and random uh, numbers will be facing on the top of this dice. Let's take a look at today's schedule. So first of all, we're going to create our Android project for creating this dice roller application. Then secondly, we'll understand the concept of state, how it works. And then thirdly, we'll start coding our application and we'll run our application on Android device. So uh, let's get started with our first topic, which is creating an Android project. So, uh, yeah. Here, uh, I've already built this application. You can see uh, some glances that how it will work. On pressing this button, the image will change. So, like this. So, let's start from scratch. So, let me create one new project by pressing this file button. Uh, you can create a new project. So such kind of pop-up will be shown. Now under the phone and tablet section, uh, select empty compose activity and press next. Here I'm going to give the name to uh, my app, which will be a dice roller app. Okay. And the package name will be same. The location will be same. The language is by default. It is Kotlin. Then minimum SDK should be API 21. And okay. Now we can click the finish button. So. Uh, the build is completed and this is the big default template that we get uh, when we create a empty compose activity application. Okay, so uh, this is a split mode, this is design mode and this is code mode. So this is some pre-written code and we have already discussed what is doing here, what is doing this code. So uh, let's remove this complete code from here now. And uh, this one as well because we want to create our application from scratch. So we are just left with the set content and on create function. So uh, now let's start building our application. So before moving to uh, our application, let's understand the concept of state works. Okay. So what is state? So I have created this definition for you so that we can uh, understand the concept of state very easily. State is nothing but a variable. When it changes, when the value of the state variable changes, the part of UI of the application where this variable is used get recomposed. Now, what do you mean by recomposed? Recomposed means just uh, that particular function of the composable will run again and will be rendered on the screen again. So this is what the state is. The single state can manage uh, the complete UI of the application. For example, let's suppose you want to create one application in which uh, there is a button on clicking which you have to toggle the or uh, turning on and off of the light. So right now the switch status is the state. Okay, the value in that state is false. So this uh, bulb should be shown. Okay. So as soon as I change the value of this uh, switch status to true, this light will be shown up and this will not. Okay, so this is what uh, the state should do. And now let's get started with our coding part. Uh, so first of all, we need to create one composable. So this is how we create the composable by annotating the function with this at the rate composable. Also, we want to see the preview on the right hand side in the split or the design section. So for that, we need to annotate it with preview uh, annotation. Okay, uh, P should be capital. And under here, I'm going to give one parameter which will be background color equals to true. I want white background to be shown here. Then I'm creating this uh, composable, which will be uh, what I can say dice roller app, dice roller app composable. Okay, so this is our one composable. Okay, I'm getting one error here. No boolean literal does not confirm to expect type long. Okay, let's try to do this once again. Review and background. It should be show background. Okay. It should be show background, not uh, background color or image. So yeah, 
now it's completely fine so this is our first composable which will contain bunch of composables to create one ui so let's create one another composable which will contain the image and the button uh, which can be seen here in our application this image and this button will be inside this composable so let's create this you can say dice roller with image and uh, button okay so we can give this name to it now uh, we can call this composable inside this uh, this one okay and uh, this composable should also be called inside in here okay and we are calling this composable in here so uh, now let's create uh, one image composable and uh, text composable inside here but if you can see here uh, there is an image and the button they are uh, stacked on the top of each other uh, i mean to say is they are in the column kind of al alignment okay so for that we need to use column column composable so this is the column composable and inside this we need one image composable and one text composable so let's create image composable here so uh, now how to import the images that we have already seen so let's import images but before moving ahead we need to download the images of this dice roller application so for that you have to come to this pathway and under android basics with compose unit you will find building app ui uh, pathway okay uh, create interactive dice roller application so you have to explore this second code lab take code lab yeah so under here seven section which is add an image section so here you will find this url open this url So you can see that the dice images dot zip is getting downloaded. So let me save this. So it has been downloaded. Now I need to extract this because it is a zip. So I'll right click and extract. Okay. Now uh, let's get back to under studio and and import those images so go to this resource manager and click this plus icon and import the drivables so to import those drivables you need to search here uh, which was dice underscore images so dice underscore images is not coming let me find it manually here uh, it is under c drive then users then yeah here it is downloaded and here we can find those uh, images so just so what you have to do you have to select all these so either you can select one by one by clicking control button and tapping on each image like this or you can select the first image and hold the shift button and click this six uh, image directly so all these images uh, falling between these two will get selected and you have to click ok then uh, you have to click next you have to click import ok so all these images have been imported uh, now we can access those images here so when I uh, yeah, I have to select this one ok now under here I have to pass painter resources and in this id I have to pass r dot drawables dot nice one and in here contain description so for that we have to pass either you can pass null or you can pass any kind of string so in here i'm getting one error so yeah that's because i have not imported this column uh, but now it has been imported yeah here you can see so let me collapse this and now yeah, we have added the image and now we also have to add the text so let's add the text so text equals to the uh, okay before adding text we also have to add button so before uh, adding text we need to add button so this button so this button has one property which is on click handler so whenever we will click the button what should happen so that can be written here okay now inside this button we have to pass text composable okay so in here i'll pass role 
Okay, cool. Uh, now let's save and let's see how the UI is looking. Uh, so build and refresh. Okay, so uh, the build has completed and uh, this is how uh, it is looking up till now. Uh, we have one image which is image of dice and then we have the button and the role text written on it. Now uh, this image is bit very large and this uh, button is also not in the center. So let's do that. So this is because the column is taking the width uh, at the height equal to the content inside it. So we need to say whatever the size of the device is, you have to take that much that much amount of height and width. So for that, we need to use a modifier in this column. So let's specify the modifier equal to modifier dot fill max size. So whatever amount of maximum size is there, it will fill to that size. Okay. And then, uh, okay, I'm getting one error because I have spelling error. So I just have to add I over there and now it's fine. Now let's try to build and refresh. So yeah, uh, we can see that uh, the image and the button is showing, uh, but we need this in center. So for that, we need to apply one more modifier on this column, which is wrap content size. So wrap content size. So and here we need to pass one property, which is align equal to alignment. Oh, sorry. Alignment dot center. So that we can center it. Wrap content size means it will be centered vertically and horizontally both. This column, this is a column, uh, and this will get centered uh, completely at this point. So let's build and refresh. So until it gets centered, uh, now let's see what again we have to do. We also have to center this button in within this column. So this button should be in the in this position. So for that, what we can do is there is a property called a uh, horizontal uh, alignment on this column. So we need to apply that property on this column. So let's apply. Uh, give comma over here, or I can say uh, before this modifier. Okay, I have given the comma before this modifier, and I'm applying the property of this column, which is horizontal alignment horizontal alignment equal to uh, alignment dot center horizontally. We need alignment to be centered horizontally. So on applying this property, the content within that column will be aligned center, aligned to center. Okay. So let me refresh. Okay. So now the this button will be centered. So yeah. We can see that now this button is also centered. So our UI is complete now. As we can see that the UI is complete. Now we have to add functionality. So uh, to add functionality, we have already understood the concept of state. And uh, let me read uh, because uh, because there is too much code written here. So it's uh, very hard to read. So for that, what we can do is since we know that this is one function, not a function but it is a composable. So we can also pass parameters and the arguments to the composable function. So why not to pass this modifier uh, or uh, yeah, why not to pass this modifier uh, to this uh, function, which is a dice roller with image and button composable as a parameter here. And then we use that uh, modifier here. So to do so, what we can do, we can delete completely this content from here. And uh, what we can do, we can, pass this modifier as an argument. So modifier equal to uh, or yeah, whatever we have copied, it is already written complete code. So we just have to remove this comma. So modifier equals to modifier dot this all complete property. So it is giving me error because we have not specified the type of the argument and the argument. So here the type will be modifier. And suppose if nothing is passed from here, so by default, it should have this modifier object. So I'm specifying it modifier. Okay. Now we have to just use this modifier here. Like so. Modifier equals to whatever uh, the modifier will come from here. Either this one or whatever passed from there. So modifier. Okay. Cool. 
uh, still I'm getting one error. Uh, that's because it should be modifier and it should be modifier. Okay, it was little spelling mistake error. So now it's completely fine. And even after building and refreshing, the UI will look the same as it is. I have just refactored the code so that it can look much clearer. Now let's add the functionality. Now uh, what we want is there will be one state, and upon changing that state, this image will change. So let's create one state first. So let's suppose this is our state because I already told that state is nothing but one variable. So uh, yeah, it should be variable because its value will change. So then upon changing the value of this uh, result, the image should be shown here. So to conditionally get the image, we need to create one uh, variable here, image of dice. Okay, I'm giving the name as image of dice. Now here we can use when statement. Okay, we already studied about this when statement in the Kotlin video. So let's pass result. And if result, if the value of the result will be one, then we will say we will return r dot doable dot uh, dice one. Okay, and if the value is two, we'll return r dot doable dot dice. Similarly, if it is three, we'll return r dot drawable dot dice three. Okay, and uh, let me just copy paste this uh, three more times. So I'm just copy pasting so that our time will be saved. Now here I have to say four, here four, here five, five, here six, here six. Okay, but this should be in the else block. Okay, if nothing from this values, then this will be returned. Okay, uh, it's fine. Now we are getting some warnings. Let's hover over it and let's see. Variable is never modified, so it can be declared using val. Yeah, we haven't modified it right now, but we will, we will modify it. So, yeah, let me copy this. And instead of this, what we can do, we can paste the name of this variable. And thus, uh, whenever a particular image will be selected and returned into this image of dice variable, that will be added here and this image will change dynamically. Now, we are just left with changing this value of the variable. So, to change the value of that variable, we can directly change the value of that variable here in the onclick function, like so. Result equal to. Now, we need to create some random numbers from 1 to 6. So, for that, we already studied about the range. So 1 to 6, uh, this will return the range from 1 to 6 and we can call the random function on this range. Okay, we need to uh, like wrap this complete range into parentheses. Okay, so on this parenthesis, we can call this random function and now it will uh, return a random number between 1 to 6 and will be stored that number into result. And as soon as the result will change, uh, depending upon the value of that result, either 1, 2, 3 or 6 or uh, any value between 1 to 6, this image will be returned. And as soon as that image will be returned, that image will be shown here and the image will change. So let me save this and build and refresh and let's see whether it is working or not. So yeah, we need to start the interaction mode by clicking here. You can start the interaction mode. So it is starting the interaction mode. Interaction mode has started. Now let's try to click this roll button. I'm clicking the roll button, but nothing is happening. Why is it so? Because this is nothing but a normal variable. We need to convert this into a state. So for that, we need to remember the value of this result. And depending uh, upon the changed value of this variable, we need to recompose this complete uh, composable. So this is not what it happening here. It is getting changed. The value is getting changed, but uh, it is not recomposing because it don't know uh, whether the value of this result is changed or not. So for that, we need to convert this result. So let's convert this particular variable into state. So for that, we just have to say uh, result by remember. So okay, by remember, and then under here we need to say mutable state of mutable state of, and we need to pass the initial value here. Okay, so yeah, uh, this mutable state of function 
returns an observable which observes the changes in the value of this particular result state and as soon as uh, the value of that state get changed the complete composable will get uh, recomposed so uh, yeah now our result state is ready and now if we build and refresh the application so uh, our app building is completed now let's try to interact with this app yo bingo so we can see that uh, now uh, the image is getting changed randomly if you have coded this application along with me so that's excellent but if you have not so start coding right now and show this application to your friends and you can use this application when you will play the sap city or ludo game next time so connected my android device uh, via usb to my laptop and now let's try to run this application on our physical device so just by clicking this play button we can uh, install application on our android device and we can see so to show you uh, i need to start one deno share phone mirror application Yeah, so this is my Android screen. Yeah. Here uh, is Dice Roller application. Yeah, and when we roll, yeah, yes, the faces are getting changed because the random numbers are getting generated, and the UI is getting recomposed as soon as uh, the result state is getting updated. So, yeah. we have finally built our application so thank you so much for attending the compose camp gdsc jhrc i enjoy teaching you all and still you are having any kind of doubt you can uh, link in me or email me on the email that which you can see on the screen so thank you so much once again and let's meet in another event till then bye bye